Hey, it's Monica Mandel here, and I'm going to show you my favorite little tool to create a number of stock words for your marketing. Now, before I go and show you how to use Thesaurus, in case you have never done that before, I want to tell you why I love using Thesaurus and also give you a word of advice or two. Now, I've been using Thesaurus for a couple of years for my marketing, and the way I use it is I create a small number of stock words for every marketing campaign I do. Now, whether you have a product or a service to sell, you need to make sure that whenever you market your business, you have a specific language. And the language is determined by your paragon, your ideal client. And this is very important because if you're trying to use cool, sassy words for an older generation, for example, you know, like the baby boomers, it's not going to work. So you need to be very aware of the language your target market is using and responding to. And if you're not sure, you can do little tests, okay? I suggest you create a number of stock words. And when I say a number, I normally go by about 15 to 30 to give me a good pool of stock words I can use over and over again for a particular service or product. Use it. Um, write a couple of blog posts and sprinkle them throughout your copy. Um, use it in your email messages, in your newsletters and see whether people actually respond to it. You can also use it on Facebook, on Twitter and just get the hang and the feeling of how the language flows with you and with your target market. And the, you soon get an indication of their response in the way people respond to you. I have seen an incredible change of um, people responding to my email once I started using my stock words more um, targeted and more um, dedicated as well. I used to be quite slack about it and didn't really do much um, except use it on the website and maybe occasionally in a newsletter. But since I've been using it consistently, I find that my subscribers are actually writing to me and my copy really connects with them at the right um, level, which means that I'm targeting my right client to start with, but I'm also targeting them with the right message and the right language. What you need to be aware of, though, is not every synonym is equal. So sometimes you can go over and above changing the meaning of a word and you actually lose the meaning and it can create issues because you'll miscommunicate your message. So be very aware of the real meaning of the word if you find a new word. The other thing you need to be aware of is not to use too many synonyms in your marketing. That's why I'm suggesting go maximum of 30 stock words per service or product. I actually started off with about 18 and now my list is at about 25 and I, I, I'm, I'm writing quite comfortably there um, with those words for my target market. So if you aim for about 18, 20 to start with, I think you're flying really well. So how do I use um, Thesaurus? It's simple. You simply go to thesaurus.com and you type in any word you want to find an alternative um, word for with the same meaning. So I'm trying to communicate that I'm non-conforming, but I find non-conforming a, a boring word. It's, you know, it's, I think I can say that better. So I type that in here, and as you can see, I get a lot of results, okay? There's a lot of results with the meaning, the definition of um, what non-conforming means and it can have different definitions and this is where you need to pay really good attention. Now as far as I'm concerned I want to communicate that non-conforming is not subscribing to the nine to five. I am not um, likely to follow rules unless obviously I break the law. I don't want to break the law so I, I, I so it wouldn't be narrow-minded or exclusive and this is where you got to be careful okay so you got to find the right definition it's not skeptical although it is in a way um, 
I'm not bizarre, I'm not, I am unusual in a word, but I probably in that regard, the non-observant definition is the best for me, okay? So what I would do next is, I look for synonyms that stand out to me when I scroll through the list of words. And the one I really like here is radical, okay? I'm quite radical in some ways. Uh, I'm a woman of extremes, and that's pretty true. Um, I either go full gung-ho or I do nothing, so this kind of fits me. But then again, when I click through the radical definition, then I find fundamental, fundamental and basic, which to me kind of screams it's almost a bit like a, you know, a, a bit extremist. And I'm not that extreme, okay? So, but what I do like is intrinsic. That really stands out to me. So the way I find my words is I start off with the one word, and I click through the different synonyms and definitions until I find something that really sits with me. And you will know when you hit the jackpot in your search because your gut feeling will say this is the right word. And please don't overanalyze this because you can't do this wrong. It's got to feel right for you. The language has got to sit with you and it's got to feel congruent with who you are, with your values, with what you're trying to communicate, and with your target market, with your paragon. So have fun with this because it's a lot of fun. And I suggest that initially to get your 20 stock words, you probably need about 20 minutes to half an hour of your time and do a concentrated search and just write down a list of all the words you find and the ones that are sitting with you, then use them in your marketing, okay? So I hope this helps. This is a very simple um, exercise, but it has a massive potential payoff. So please do it.